This is the narcissist's response to losing control that they've built so hard. Okay, everyone, it's time for another episode about narcissists. To cut to the chase, I'd want to discuss what happens when a narcissist loses power over another individual. My experience has shown me that narcissists are emotionally vulnerable persons with a malign purpose to hurt others. Due to their extreme reliance, they are always looking for approval from others. They persist in seeming superior and arrogant, despite their inability to contribute anything. And yet, despite their inability to provide anything of value, they still manage to grab all the attention. Narcissists are like unwelcome gifts in pretty wrapping paper. They're attractively packaged on the exterior, but inside you'll find nothing but dirt and stones. Narcissists require dominance as a means of shielding their fragile selves and a sense of self-importance. Despite their arrogance, they have an extremely low opinion of themselves. Narcissists employ these strategies to gaslight, guilt, or shame others into doing what they want. Learning about the destructive patterns of narcissists and how they affect their victims can give you a sense of safety in your relationship. Otherwise, your feelings of perplexity, anger, embarrassment, and isolation are likely to persist because you're always in the dark. Some forms of narcissistic manipulation are more subtle than others. Narcissists may use criticism, self-doubt, and a lack of closeness as tools of manipulation. What fascinates me is how they cope with the situation because, to say the least, it is repulsive. How do you think they'll respond to this? You may want to prepare your opinions from now. Narcissists have an insatiable need to feel in charge of as many people as possible. A narcissist will stop at nothing to keep it that way. More often than not, narcissists rise to power not through violence, but via manipulation and playing the victim. They are working hard to earn people's love and attention, it's true, but they're choosing the wrong way. Instead of focusing on building themselves, narcissists constantly need outside stimuli to feel alive. They want you to feel genuine, heartfelt concern for them. Your emotional investment in them makes them more effective at manipulating your feelings. So, when dealing with a narcissist, be wary of their capacity to manipulate your emotions. It is at their discretion when and with whom they manipulate your feelings. That is, they are not just about controlling you as an individual, but also about manipulating your interactions with others and the reactions they elicit from you. They like the ensuing anarchy and drama because they are the ones who are tugging the strings and planting the seeds of conflict. This means that a narcissist will feel increasingly uneasy, agitated, and angry the longer it takes for you to make contact with them again after emotionally withdrawing. If the narcissist relied heavily on you, your departure would likely have a terrible effect on them. This video explains why the narcissist is concerned with the amount of narcissistic supply you provide them. With a greater supply comes a greater potential for waste. However, when a narcissist loses influence over their victim, it means the victim has successfully recaptured power. They've decided to either change how they interact with the narcissist or completely cut connections with them. And knowing this will make narcissists turn to rage. Narcissists have trouble accepting rejection because they believe they deserve to be in charge and can't accept that the other person has chosen to stop talking to them. If the narcissist loses control of their supply, no matter how small, they will feel threatened. Thus, they can choose among several responses to the catastrophe. Narcissists might respond by emphasizing the advantages they already have, or by exposing some secret advantages they've been testing out. Because of their strong need to be constantly affirmed and not feel irrelevant, Narcissists may give the impression that they have quickly moved on. But the narcissist uses it to protect themselves. They're trying not to think about how they contributed to the rejection 
or how they could have handled the situation better. If the narcissist is unable to maintain control over a person, they may look elsewhere for the same or similar satisfaction. Narcissists may, as a second response, make further efforts to win you back. This is the point at which they would resort to gushing over you in devotion or acting all meek and humble in your presence. Another tactic is to play the victim in the hopes that you will change your mind about cutting ties with them. That's because they want your understanding, trust and love again. However, the narcissist will bend over backward to win you back, just to toss you aside once more in the future, because advancing one's own interests is a driving force for them. When the narcissist feels helpless, he or she may act out by seeking retribution. To be sure, this is something that every narcissist wants, but some will value it more than others. Narcissists get preoccupied with you because they want to get something from you, usually money, love, sex, you name it. If they can't have you or keep you under control, they don't want anyone else to want you or be near you. That's why they're working so hard to turn your supporters against you. Their retribution typically takes the shape of harsh attacks on one's reputation. However, narcissists can use their flying monkeys to spread lies and rumours about you in an effort to make people question your honesty and integrity. They will once again use the victim card, but this time they will make you out to be the one who is heartless, self-absorbed and completely insane. They want you to feel bad about moving on or changing how you treat them. Narcissists also have many methods when dishing out punishment, such as trying to hurt you in ways that would give you extreme anguish. This is why the defamation campaign of a narcissist is as severe as any punishment that can be imagined. Narcissists often hit rock bottom when they are unable to impose their will on another person. They believe that they have exhausted all potential avenues for obtaining narcissistic supply and that the quantity and quality of narcissistic supply they have already gotten is the greatest and highest possible. However, they have to face the sad reality that they can't fully control you. Eventually, they give in to their vices and allow their sadness to rule over them becoming the sad personification of everything they had been attempting to hide behind their mask. Because of this, some narcissists may have severe suicidal tendencies. A narcissist's most extreme reaction could be to cut off all of their resources. For a narcissist, losing control over another person is like a punch in the gut. Therefore, they'll do all they can to get it back. It's unfortunate that some folks just can't seem to recover. Narcissists value power and control above all else, but we must remove them from our lives if we are to heal and find happiness once more. And for this, I'm eagerly awaiting your response, because I believe that each of you may have different opinions and experiences regarding this. What was the narcissist's reaction when they discovered they could no longer control you? Is it possible they've switched to a different supply? Did they develop an unhealthy obsession with revenge? They must have kicked rock bottom, right? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. But that's all I have to say for the time being. Please consider giving this a like and sharing this video with others if you found it useful. I always value your time and attention. Thank you very much.